Yes. All right, here we go. Hey, how are you spelling I, gorgeous? I just messaged Brad. He joined <laughs> oh. us. All right, here we go. Interesting. And so the winter of the third age of Middle-earth in the year 3009 was ushered in. It came with its snow, burying the bodies that lay slain and cloven from the Battle of the Dam, and then passed. During that time, Dunlin was at peace. Wolfric the Cleaver and his allies had been put to death, and for the first time in a long while, the clans of eastern and western Dunlin traded in fur, food, and other supplies. There were even feasts on the high days of winter, and as spring crept closer, hope was in the air. Carol Braddock and Domino Morganac busied themselves with cementing alliances between the clans and making sure new friendships did not go amiss. In the meantime, Erevul sent his fellow ranger, Wilward, north. There he was to inform Halbarad and the rangers of Esteldon of the events in Dunland. Duin here departed for Gondor saddened by the news of the passing of his mentor, but also emboldened by the chance to avenge his death. Finally, as the spring waters ran forth from the mountains, high and rushing, Torald and Vidar aided in the construction of a more permanent crossing at the fords of Tharbad. But with the warm weather came also the doom of the days ahead. No matter their valor and bravery, it became clear that the men of Dunlin alone would not be enough to beat back the shadow in the north and retake Fornost. Nay, numbers were needed, and so also those skilled in the ways of war. It was decided that the clans of Dunlin would await word to march north across the bridge at Tharbad. Until that time, they would train and fashion equipment that would serve them in the dark days ahead. Meanwhile, with all haste, Erevul, Vidar, Thorold, Carol, Drumnall would ride north and then west, finally making for the River Loon, and then to Ered Luin and the ancient halls of the dwarves. For on horseback, the journey would not be too arduous, and the dwarves of those mountains were long fabled to be warriors indeed. So it's kind of the morning time, and you guys are just crossing that newly built bridge across the, uh, I think it's the Swan Fleet or the Grey Flood, whatever that river is by Grey Thorbun. Flood. Yeah, the Grey Flood. So you're cl clopping on your horses across this bridge, and it's morning time. Um, all the men of uh, Dunland are kind of dispersed and helping with, you know, rebuilding the city and that sort of thing. Um, while you're gone, they'll be doing that thing, and they'll be training, and they'll basically be awaiting word to march up the Greenway to Fornos whenever the time is, uh, is ripe. And so uh, we'll take it away. Before we do, I just have a quick question um, mm -hmm. about my my sheet. We've you know spent the winter and now it's the beginning of spring. You say, mm -hmm. so um, I'm assuming I'm not weary anymore and my endurance is back up to its normal. Yes, I I, okay. I, I, I think I adjusted that on everybody's, but maybe I didn't. No, I'm I'm still showing weary. Every, everything's back to normal. Okay, just wanted to make sure before I changed anything. Hope levels and... are back up. No hope. Hope stays the same. Yeah, it only changes when you're... Hope and Shadow are actually pretty hard to regain it or... Uh... So the other thing you guys want to do is going to be to uh, change your traveling gear to spring. Oh, nice. And uh, spring traveling gear is going to be... Uh, two? Yeah, it's two. Winter was... Autumn was three. It's huh. very strange. All right, that's it. Take it away, one percent of our peers. I fell out from what's their what's their present situation as far as. Uh, you guys are basically kind of uh, uh, crossing that br new bridge at Tharbad. Your horses are clip-clopping over the, the new bridge that's there. 
and you guys are striking out on a multi-day journey. You've estimated it'll take around a couple weeks to go up the Greenway, hit the East Road, go over to the River Loon, and then up to Airy Loon uh, to meet with the dwarves there to try to try to recruit them to your purpose. Oosh. Barrett Lewin. So. Okay. I suppose Domino will just be riding along. Not really. Doesn't know much about dwarves, so. Boy. Use all in for a treat now. We're going to go see Markian. There'll be great halls with feasts when we arrive. And their soldiers, well, their soldiers will help us turn the tide of this war. And it's basically just clear that even though Dunlin, you have a lot of guys that, you know, they're not, they're not trained, they're not, they're warm bodies, no help, but they're not going to be enough, obviously. Arvo is just, he basically rides over the Grey Flood and pulls his cloak closer over his shoulders as a cool wind blows across the bridge and nods to Vidar and says, Aye, the dwarven halls are nothing to be, um, are nothing that many men have seen. It is a great honor. Well, you're in for a treat then. We shall get mighty soldiers to aid us in our coming days. We will need every man, every dwarf, every elf, if the Hobbit and Arnthor have succeeded on their task. Well, let's hope they did, but if they didn't, we can do without them elves. We'll have Dwarves on our side. Are you so certain that the dwarves will aid us in this time of need? You tell those dwarves that orcs be running through these areas, that orcs have taken Fornost. They'll be eager to fight. I certainly hope you're aware. You're right, Master Dwarf. So are we all. Yep, so here's your route. So you guys are, uh... Down there at the right bottom-hand corner. And basically over the course of 13 days, you're going to go up the... Here, right here. You want to go up the uh, up the Greenway, cross over at Sarn Ford, strike the East Road, head over towards uh, just past the uh, Tower Hills, and and turn north and uh, go overland up to the Halls of the Dwarves. Um, the current of this river is obviously going down towards the Gulf, mm -hmm. and so that, that actually hurts your travel time. But on the way back, you could probably take boats if you could talk the dwarf into it so right. um <laughs> <laughs> so um assign tra uh travel roles and so um who has travel yep so so the person that wants to be uh uh travel roles should be the guide mm -hmm. so yeah, guide who... hunter lookout and scout yeah who well, has the highest travel um I I have travel three, and it's um, what you call it? Underlined? What's that called? Favored. 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 I think that's probably the best. That's probably the best. Yeah, I have travel two favored, and if I if I invoke my attribute bonus, would add six. It's probably the dwarf. I have two as well for travel. Yeah. So the other ones are awareness, explore. Um, what's the other one? Hunting. Hunting. I have a hunting of three. Well, there's our hunter. 
I have hunting Unless somebody three. has a shit. Uh, if someone has a shit awareness, then I, I have a two in that. But I have a hunting three non favored. Does anybody have explore? I have explore two favored. Same. So you guys are a tie on both of those then. Yeah. So it's basically yeah. whatever, whatever. So, yeah. I have I awareness of three, so I can do that. I have mm-hmm. tracking if you want me to hunt. Can I invoke tracking somehow to? Yeah, that could that could happen. That could work on some of them. Mm-hmm. Something. What would your um, explore be with the uh, attribute bonus? Uh, B two. Then if I use body, it would be plus five. Favorite would be plus six. But it, so it'd be plus six if I invoked it. So, so v- Vidar's the uh, guide. Mm-hmm. Airvol's lookout. Mm-hmm. And then who's Hunter? Ian. Ian's I'll gonna be the hunter. Score. And uh, Ghost is going to be the, the hunter or the uh, scout. 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 <clears throat> All right. So then the next step uh, after that is going to be. <clears throat> going to be uh, preliminary travel rolls, which is a lore check. Lore? Yep, so lore. That will be, give you your bonus die. Is that everyone? Everyone. Standard 14 target number? Mm-hmm. Everyone gets a bonus die for lore? Or? If you pass. If, oh, you, okay. if you pass, that determines how many bonus die oh, you get. Oh, well, this can happen. Yeah. There's a, there's a good start. I'm the one on the past. <laughs> so Arvo gets a uh, gets one bonus. I get to be this session's Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be so hard on yourself. <laughs> I need to pump my lore up. This uh, lore comes up a lot. Yeah, lore is important in this game. I think Arthanor's is really high. It is. Three favored. Does anybody have high high lore besides Thoral who didn't show up? No, I just have two. Oh, uh, I got that. You guys might be missing a lot of rolls tonight. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> All right. Um, so those are the, those preliminary rolls, and basically for any of the travel checks along the journey, you can you can use those. There's not going to be too many of them since you're on horseback. <clears throat> so. Oh, I will. You all just follow me. I'll guide you there. I'll take you to my kin. <laughs> we are in your hands, Master Dwarf. Wait to meet him, me booty. As the company journeys forth, the spring sun rises in the east and warms your backs. For just north of Thorvad, the Greenway mostly turns to the left, winding ever westward. Winter is gone, and little flowers, lilting petals of purple and white and yellow, can be seen on either side of the ancient road. At first, the going is rather flat. Here and there, you can spy, far on either side, towers that have tumbled down through the long years. Now, like Thorvad, they rest only as ruins and yield to the green that grows upon their old stone. There are dwellings, but not many. Perhaps once a day you see a a wisp of smoke rising over a hill or see a lone farmer tending to his fields. But for now, you are wary and likely decide that secrecy is best and do not approach them. All in all, you travel by day and make good time and camp by night.
you're going to be rolling. Are you wanting all, all of us to roll travel or just oh, the yeah, rollers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh, it's okay. your. It's the first check. It's just rolling. <clears throat> Nice. So, Aaron. Coral. Domal succeeds. Vidar succeeds. No eyes, which is good. No hazard triggers. So, uh, in spring, you guys are going to uh, add to travel fatigue. Who is? The ones that do fail. Yeah. Okay. Carol and Arahul. Mm -hmm. Boy. Is the traveling hard for you folks? He just looks down at Vidar. Doesn't say anything. Yeah. Not so used to being on a horse for so long. Throws my hips off. Well, gather yourself up. We still have a ways to go. And go we shall. What is this um, icon on my token? Is that supposed to be the... That's your uh, extra point. Yeah, it's extra, extra. Oh, gotcha. Extra, extra die, gotcha, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. And I'll give that to you guys for the, the duration of the journey or whatever. Ghost dropped off, so. Damn it, ghost. Get that connection fixed. Mine's been real sketchy, too, lately. What's wrong with you people? Gotta bring in the T1. Actually, I just, uh, our router's in the basement, and I have a, it's sitting on a, a table. So I just plug the cable right into my laptop. <laughs> yeah, my Wi-Fi is shit, but I'm down in the basement. Directly connect. Direct connect's the way to go. Mm -hmm. I really wish that I could do the same. It's twice it fell out, so tonight's like, night's gonna be a good one. <laughs> Yeah, I have to have, a, have I'm on Wi-Fi too. You can you can I... you can do it through your electrical panel, right? Your you can do direct connect through um, power outlets. I can it's use that. not bad. Um, you just get an adapter, plug it into the plug it into a source for power, and then you have one on the other side. Huh. Well, it looks like we've stumbled on a fine little village here. So at some point, the Greenway, the Greenway forks, and you choose to continue to the left, heading westward. After crossing a rushing river, signs of civilization become more commonplace. In fact, you notice something quite queer. The, the folks sowing their spring fields are very short. The country is green and peaceful, and there's a current of civility in the air, for the spring is a merry time in this land, and while the halflings you pass give you curious glances, you sense no malice. The road now is easy, and your steeds seem to sense that now may be a time to rest and recuperate for the journey ahead. So if anybody wants to give me lore or travel... Everybody roll lower travel. I wanted just somebody to do it. <laughs> Vidar. <laughs> eh. Makes sense, Vidar. He's the most well traveled EV guy, probably. Well, Arabul probably is too. So you got a. Uh, what'd you get? A great success? I did. Uh, send you a little bit of information here. 
about the river you you pass and the the land you've entered. <clears throat> Well, for those of you that don't know, this area we've been going on about, the land, this here, this part here is known as the Shire. If you know Goodwill Took, he's that little fella that's been working with us, took off with that elf. You know that this is his home. If the tales you've told are true, means then we have nothing to fear. These hobbits, they mean us no harm. There's multiple villages up here just like this. Sackville, Hardbottle, Longbottom, Whitwell. It just goes on and on. The Great East Road is out that way too. We'll be heading out there. East of Michael Delving is the White Downs. It's awesome. Okay, yeah, there's there's a lot of neat things out here. <laughs> <laughs> and so Vidar just goes on uh, letting them know about uh, uh, the the history of this area. Um, there's a postmaster and a mayor and the the, the first sheriff, uh, a museum even uh, called the Metham House, Matham House. No, um, we don't have time for any of that. We should just find an inn to stay at for the night and have a good meal and then be off in the morning. Half of what you say don't even register to Carol, but yet he shows a great enthusiasm listening to you. I nig know anything about our stars. He says, but what you say is true. We should have a good time here, my sakes. Well, their drink is good. Their smoke is better. They be tiny folk, though. But they do enjoy themselves. I think it's a good place to rest. We can even let them know about their, their, uh, their own, Mister Tuk Tuk. Aye, that's a funny name, Tuk Tuk. Do you not keep any of it quiet about here? We don't know who we can trust, even in these parts. To be honest. And the Arvel kind of nods. And... They are easy to fright hobbits. I would not overstep ourselves here and tell them anything of the Great War. It will only bring them to panic or have us thrown out immediately. Boy, well, well. We still need to settle for the night. Let's see what kind of accommodations we can get. So as you go through the countryside, there's these green hills, and it's kind of the first days of spring, and so there's, you know, all the hobbits out in the field, and they're sowing their crops and that sort of thing, and they give you these kind of disgruntled glances as these, these, uh, this dwarf and these, these men kind of ride by on their horses, but they don't, don't take any action against you, obviously. First couple of villages you kind of come to, they basically are just... Um, very loose collections of, of of hobbit holes and and maybe a little s small civic building. There's not really an inn or anything like that. And eventually, as you uh, go further and further north, uh, I'd say you've been on the road probably for about a week at this point, just kind of camping on your way up. You uh, uh, come to a larger town, almost a, a city. And as you do that, um, Vidar would say, you know, this is probably Mickle Delving kind of uh, what stands for loosely the, the quote-unquote capital of the Shire. And so as you uh, enter Mickle Delving, you see there's this huge thoroughfare going right through it. And there's uh, hobbits with uh, ponies carrying uh, uh, seed seed and that sort of thing for the, for the spring. And they kind of look at you curiously, but they don't say much to you again. And, and there's, uh, there are taverns, there's there's uh, pretty much anything you would find in a, in a, in a city type of place. Um, and at this point, it's kind of like uh, getting on towards the evening. So if you're going to go go rest, there would be uh, ample places to do that. Um, most notably, uh, as you go into town, right at the junction of the Great East Road and uh, 
it's not the greenway but the the road that goes south uh is a inn called the the bird and baby you kind of see the uh the placard hanging over the establishment it's just like a it's like an eagle carrying a baby in its talons well this is as good as any that looks like a good spot to get a drink he nods and dismounts and looks for somewhere to hitch his horse and there are there are there are some some hitches there but they're super low to the ground they're obviously meant for like little small almost like shetland ponies mm -hmm. <laughs> and so as arahul goes to do that he just like has to has to kind of stoop and his horse has his head like 45 degrees down towards the mm -hmm. towards the ground Herbal is like, I won't leave him in this state for very long. And he like just rubs his hand over the horse's mane. And once we are settled, I'll come back out and with a tether of rope and let these horses have some freer rain. <coughs> he looks at the Dunlindines and says, Remember, these are suspicious folk. Carol's totally intrigued because he's a traveler and a wanderer by nature anyway. In his mind, these are nothing more than kids. So if they look at him, he's just going to do his best to defuse the situation by waving. Grinning his little gap to his smile. Just, hey. So as you do this, you and you're, you're hitching your horses. There's this like group of five or six little little hobbit kids. Um, and they're they're glancing at you from around the end and you just see like like curly little heads of hair and uh three or four sets of eyes looking at you abdominal and one of them like the, the biggest of the bunch a boy kind of gets pushed out the girls kind of push him out they're like like ask him ask him ask him and he comes forward and he has like an apple in his hand he takes a big bite of it and goes my mates say that you're an elf is that true <laughs> No, little hobbit. I am from further south. I am a Dunlending. He says, uh, Dunlending? What's that? Tell me about your land. And he yells back to his friends and he says, I told you! Much too dirty to be an elf. <laughs> and I kind of like, you know, that whole, like, that sort of sticks in my craw a bit, but he's just, it seems good natured, so Domino's not holding it against him. Anyway, uh, if you'd wish, I'll tell you all about my land as soon as I get me a bit of a drink. A bit of a drink, he says. Hi. He says, he yells to one of his friends, and he says, hey, come over here. They're trying to go to your papa's place. They want a place to stay. And so the rest of the kids kind of come out, and they... They're kind of looking at your horses, and they're they're just uh, very curious types, and they're looking at your weapons and your saddlebags and that sort of thing, and asking you so many questions you can't you can't answer. And one of them eventually says, "The burden, baby, that's in my pop's place. Come on in, and I'll introduce you." Thank you, young one. What is your name? I am Aravul of Cardinon. Uh My name is Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Johnny took to Johnny. Uh, Johnny Brace Girdle. No. <laughs> my name is Johnny Brace, Brace Girdle, and my papa, Big John, is inside. <laughs> Never met a John I didn't like, so <laughs> me in. And so you guys have to go inside this establishment. It's just a, a big, uh, a round green door. It's not big. You, each and every one of you, except the dwarf, probably have to test to duck to go inside. Oh yeah, and, uh, definitely. You head into the the bird and baby uh, tavern. Carol's cutting up with the kids along the walk, making funny faces while the other people talk. Yeah, I'm definitely stooped in here. Being as tall as I am. So as you oh. as you come in, uh, you notice that the air is thick with uh, sweet smelling smoke, and there's a little band in the in the corner playing 
a lute and a harp and various other instruments you would find and a flute. Um, there is a man behind the, the counter there serving drinks to a bunch of hobbits that are on these high bar stools. And as you look down, their feet don't even touch the ground. They're, they're furry feet without any shoes. Oh, as you no. look around, the, you're obviously, like, obviously everybody just turns to you. And uh, the music, the music just stops. I'm going to elbow Domino in the ribs and talk to him in a native tongue, Don Linden. And I'd be like, hey, why are these wee ones fagging daps at? I see me. He still couldn't understand you. <laughs> Where's your friggin' shoes at? <laughs> I do not think they wear them here. I haven't seen, but I haven't seen nary a shoe since we've arrived. They got more bristles on the tops of their feet than the boars of Dunlinden. Aye, it's a strange and queer folk we've come across. Vidar just smiles and kind of just loudly proclaims, Why, oh, hello! We could, uh, we could use some ale! The, just um, looks at the hobbits. On the, the on the end of the bar, yeah, on, at the end of the bar, there's a skinny hobbit with he has his head extremely shorter than the others, and uh, the, the the closest one to him has his like bar stool scooted away. So everybody else at the bar is kind of cutting up and smoking a pipe, pipe and having a pint of ale. And this guy's kind of off to the side. And uh, he kind of looks at you guys and says, Hey, so who might you be? Uh, if you come in here, there's like to be trouble. I've been hearing news of it up from the south. Lots of queer going on. Johnny, kick him out of here. Get him out of the shire. You'll have no trouble from us, Master Hobbit. And John the barkeep says, don't bother Lotho here. Nobody can trust the Saxville anyways, but he does have a point. And he kind of looks you guys up and down and say, last time you types were up from the south, we ended up with a robbery, something we haven't had here for a dozen years. I'll state your business. And so, uh, what you do you guys, or somebody to take the point um, to try to get a get a room here, whatever you want to do. You can use a riddle or courtesy, I suppose, or something else if you have better ideas. <clears throat> well, I have this four in battle now. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I've got, so let's go ahead and look at who's got riddle here and who's got courtesy. I've got two riddle. I would probably just use a distinctive feature of lordly. Nice. That's what I would try to do. Okay, so how's that so, look? Yep, so Arvel steps forward and he's tries to stand at his full height, of, which is really possible. No, he's not doing <laughs> all. But, um, you still get it. You still get an AP in personality though for using the trait. So, okay. <laughs> and he says, "Master Hobbit, I am Arvel, son of Arafel, Prince of Cardalon." On my honor and my family's honor, you will have no such luck from us. We are not brigands and thieves. We are merely travelers on an important quest to Erluin the Blue Mountains. And he looks to Vidar and he's like, Vidar is kin. This, these other men are men of Dunland. Who fight for all free peoples of Middle Earth? And as you talk, like this bar keeps eyes just look at you, just start to kind of glaze over as you're talking about Cardinal and <laughs> mm -hmm. that sort of thing. And, and on your right, there's this really fat one who just starts pounding the bar. He's like, <laughs> a wandering minstrel, he is. <laughs> and so uh, the bar keeps says, I. I see you may have a point, but uh, and I might be convinced, but Lotho here sure isn't. And as much as I dislike him, his family does have some pool down in Sackville. A lot of our pipe weed comes from that region down there in South Farthing. 
So even though I might be okay with giving you a room upstairs, I have my patrons to deal with. And if you know anything about hobbits, you know that the only thing they like more than eating is talking about people and gossiping. So you got one. You have one success, no failures on him. So okay. let somebody else go. Oh well, we may not know much about hobbits, but we do know a hobbit. And that hobbit is helping us right now. He took it upon his will to help us because he thinks that our journey and our mission is critical, especially for the safety of his home and his people, which I suspect would be the same as your home and your people. Mr. Goodwill took to, he traveled with us a while back. He is off in, uh, where is he? He's in, uh, he's off in Riverdale now, trying to curry favor with their males to come back and fight with us. Mr. Goodwill took to, well, if he thinks it's important enough to seek for, seek help, well, I would I would hope that you would think it's important enough to help us. And so, just like there's the fat hobbit on Aravul's right, there's a a fat one on your left, and he starts. <laughs> hey, hey, looky here, Johnny. We got a name dropper. Everybody knows the name of Took around these parts, but I've never heard of any goodwill. So go ahead and make your roll. My what? Uh, you can make your roll, riddle or courtesy. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it all sounded good until, uh-oh. Uh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> can you get a bonus for marine training? <laughs> <laughs> Negative. Dwarfish marine training. Uh, nine. Does your, does, what, what's your uh, wits? <laughs> Oh, um, that's true, yeah. It'd be at least five. My wits are uh, favored or straight? Is, is, is rid riddle a favored or, uh, is, skill? Is favored a favored skill for you? Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, uh, no, it would be four, so 13. Mm. Oh, it's just, just one failure. You, you get a couple of them, so. Uh, so what what they, they kind of start laughing at you at, at as you as you start name dropping the name of Tooks and, and he says there hasn't been a Took over in these parts for many years. They help stay up there on Tookville. And he says uh, a couple dozen leagues to the west. No. Oh. I'm gonna have a talk with that Took when I see him. Then they kinda look at the, the Dunlendings. And the barkeep says, but these two foreigners, I take it, they have a strange look about them. He says, I don't doubt their civility. Sound like a bit of a dig. <laughs> Carol stepped forward. He's, uh, he has folklore, so, and he also, I guess, riddle would be his closest thing. He tried to per try to approach him on a common sense type of approach you just be like he says i we be foreigners there's nag denying that he says but at the same time there's nag answer me this there'd be nag denying simple honest folk a chance to rest their heads and recuperate for a night's rest or two he says i look at me and i flex my little you know i look like a barrel on legs you know little donley done dude flex his little blacksmithing arm and he goes i've got strong arms to help lend a hand he says i can serve drinks i can mend your barrels sharpen your knives anything you want just let me know Andy man do we now he says grant us a night's rest and i'll earn me keep <laughs> and then johnny says ah Instead of dropping names, this man is hard working. He's willing to pay off a debt, especially if his friends cause trouble. What do you say to that, boys? And like the, the three drunks, the fat drunk hobbits that are sitting farther away from Lotho, they're like, they start, <laughs> sure, sure. For the first work, why don't you put him to dance in a jig and singing us a tune? Oh, God. Oh, perfect. <laughs> right up its alley. Good way to get us thrown out. <laughs> Just so happens to have my pig horn right here in my pocket. Just so happens. <laughs> so you can do uh, a riddle or song or or courtesy. Or, I don't think you even have courtesy, but 
let's, let's do do something. See how you do here. That riddle. I'm looking up riddles real quick. Uh, well, riddle is it. just like riddle's not riddle. It's just yeah, it's not. It's not using riddles. It's just uh, it's kind of fast talk, kind of yeah. But I want to. But I want to entertain them. <laughs> Why don't you do a song? <laughs> it's favored. <laughs> yeah, it is favored. Uh, Plus, I really want to hear it. Mm -hmm. Plus, you have you have favored body of six. Yeah. Try to think of a good song. Pause the recording, real quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've picked it up. We've picked it back up. It's now one o'clock in the morning. I mean, it's gonna do it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you pause it by chance? No, I didn't pause it. Oh my god, dude. We want to just extensively edit this one. I guess you, you could make these like super produced, like well produced, if you had the time. Oh, to yeah, if you wanted to edit them all. Yeah, everything. I almost never stop recording. I almost never yeah. edit it. Some of the ones, like some of the ones online, like that's what they do. They have gone. They've mm -hmm. added sound effects. They've gone, but that just takes too much time. The ghost just dropped again. I can't sing that song. My God. Can't sing that song either. Trying to find one that don't have dirty lyrics in it. <laughs> My God, I wasn't prepped for this. You should let me know. I'm just, I'm just improv. I didn't have any, anything planned. I fell out of gear. <laughs> what did they miss? Nothing. Okay, good. Mm, what parts of the Shire rhymes with New Orleans? Uh, the Stone Deans. The Stone Deans. I, I, just made, I just made that up. I don't know. What would be? What's? There's nothing south of Mika Belvin. I don't think on the map. Either. This is like the White Downs area. South Farthing. <laughs> south Farthing. Okay. You're I can. Thinking. I can try I'm that. Gonna, I'm gonna lower the TN to 12 since you're putting so much fucking effort. Oh, oops. oops. <laughs> So much effort into it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think I got too. one. I'll start. I would, I would just say, uh, my character sings the song. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the All right. Man? If they want me to sing a song, I, like, I just happen to have one here right in my pocket. Bust it out and start letting out a tune. And it kind of sounded like the intro to Thunderstruck by ACDC, you know, similar type, you know. <laughs> Start singing. Be going, and then just look around and look for a female hobbit and look at her, do like the little wink, and go, baby, please don't go. Baby, please don't go. Baby, please don't go down to South Farthings. You know I love your soul. Baby, please don't go. Now when the man done gone, when the man done gone, when the man done gone down the country farm, he got the shackles on. Baby, please don't go. Don't leave me so. <laughs> and as as he's as he's uh, starts to sing, the band starts to kick up the tune and. And a bunch of hobbits start gat like uh, dozy doing around on the 
the dance floor there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Roll mine. I watch me fail it miserably. I Twelve. Do. Twelve is not hard. Especially when you had a hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll get into it. Spend the hope. Alright. I'll add a six to it. Alright, so I'm gonna give you a I'm gonna give you two APs for that one, actually. I decided I need to be a little more liberal with those. So as you do that, uh, all the hobbits start to dance and the, the air is thick with pipe weed smoke and uh, the uh, the waiters are busy serving drinks and bread and butter and that sort of thing and, and the barkeep says, Hi, okay, very well. I'll get you all a room upstairs. And he says, if that tune didn't go well, you'd be sleeping with the pigs. That would be too restful now, would it? And he says, anything that's good for business, I'm okay with. And then as they as they continue to dance and everything, there's more and more, more and more hobbits start to come in through the door and that sort of thing. And uh, there almost starts to be like this song battle that come, plays up uh, by the band. And like one hobbit will sing a tune and the other one will sing a tune. And and uh, eventually, uh, this uh, tall hobbit that's t taller than the rest takes up this big silver flagon and slams it on a table and say, "Hi." Tonight is a night for song. He says, the best one here gets this flagon. And you look at it, and it's pretty, uh, pretty nice looking thing. And this guy says, this flagon, and he lowers his voice. He says, this flagon has been nowhere else but far, far off to the east. Rumor have it, has it that that queer baggins over in Hobbiton, part of that dragon's spoil. And there's a hush that falls across the room. And uh, they say, who wants to be first to sing a tune? If it was a storytelling contest, Domino's all in, but it's tunes, no. He'll, he'll look at Carl and... How about that? Any, any sort of entertainment, basically, okay? He'll do that. Oh, oh boy. I'm, all, I'm about it, about it. Well, I would use uh, my storytelling specialty if it would apply here. And uh, it would. I, I, I'm not going to give you just a free back. success for that, since it's a, mm -hmm. since this is kind of a contest. Mm -hmm. but I, what I would do would be to uh, to lower your t lower your TN to twelve. Okay, and would that be a riddle? Uh, riddle, yeah. All right, so I'll set I'll set this up before I do it. Essentially, um, I would stand up and. I must admit I've got no songs to sing, but I do have stories to tell about a creature most fabulous, a creature most powerful in nature. My good as little you, hobbits, if as I you start could. To talk like the, the music stops and they start to play a more like somber type of uh, a song. I would regale a lot of you with the tale of the beaver. <laughs> and, uh... At this point, Johnny's kids, those little curly head, little hobbit kids, those huge brown eyes, I think are so cute. They're kind of like watching you. you know, oh, they're, they're like, I don't worry. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <sighs> I like being Chris. <laughs> They boo and start throwing fruit at you. So, so what's the tale of the beaver about? Oh, that was just going to be me talking about our um, tribe history, how the beaver is an important special symbol. And we have, I'm, I, d I don't have one offhand right away, but I would just make some of that would have succeeded. But that's, that's, uh, what's I would Johnny's say they're last name? Beaver. <laughs> Johnny Brace Girdle. They don't want to hear about any beavers. It doesn't so, look like they did. It turns out, like, when you're describing the beavers, one of his kids, like, gets this image in his head of this, like, 10-foot-tall furry thing with a flat tail and huge teeth. You say something about his teeth being huge, his front teeth, and this kid just flips out, and he starts running and he's clinging on to, 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 to Johnny's apron. It's, Papa, Papa, the Batman scared me. And he says, 
What are you trying to do, my good man? Scare my boy? He's not a tough one. This one very sensitive. <laughs> so what? What did you? Um, what did you just roll? Oh, riddle. Okay. Yeah. And so I'd see that this this crowd is not the uh, the warrior crowd that I'm used to being around. <laughs> and I just uh, and sigh, sit back down, and start drinking again. Carol oh. wants Carol wants to try to save Grace. Go for it. <laughs> And he's going to go to the kid that's afraid and go, No, no, no need for tears, little boy. Just what be your name? What be your name? Tell me quickly. Uh, he, was, he was little Johnny. It was the one you saw earlier. It's that same one. Oh, uh, uh, it's Johnny Bracegirdle. Johnny Bracegirdle, yeah. Okay, I'll just look at him and I'll wink and I'll go, No, nig, no, nig, nig, need for to be afraid. Look down at him and get out the pig born, start cutting into a little tune. And it's the Bilbo Baggins song by Leonard Nimoy. <laughs> <laughs> I go, <laughs> and I'll start going into the, in the middle of the earth and the land of the Shire lives a brave little hobbit whom we all admire. With his long wooden pipe, fuzzy woolly toes, he lived in a hobbit hole and everyone knows him. Johnny, Johnny Bracegirdle, he's only three feet tall. Johnny, Johnny Bracegirdle, the bravest little hobbit of them all. Oh my god. That's an automatic success. You win. As this con the people like in the contest area start looking to you as your voice rises above the din, and they start they start they start clapping, <laughs> slow clap, clap, and clap, <laughs> clap, clapping, and then little Johnny starts to dance circles around you. And after you're done, they raise that silver flagon and they says, "Oh, to you, to the southerner," and they they give, they give it to you. Woohoo! <laughs> try to get, try to get the kid into it too. Start getting to the main course part. Like, well, he fought with the goblins. He battled a troll. He riddled with Gollum and Matt Crown. He stole. He was chased by wolves. Lost in the forest. Escaped in a barrel from the elf king's hall. Oh, Johnny! That's when y'all need to start <laughs> chiming in with y'all as a core. Go, Johnny! Johnny! Brace <laughs> Earl, the bravest little hobbit of them all. <laughs> <laughs> Our bull so, is uh, watching this stupefied. So add, <laughs> I want you to add uh, Bilbo's silver flagon to your inventory, your, your your sheet. Just put a note on there, whatever. <laughs> and that's worth two treasure if you would ever want to sell it. Nice. <laughs> you got Bilbo's silver flagon. That's pretty so, cool. So anybody that's not taking part in this, if you want to kind of like gather rumors from the crowd or like chat up some of the hobbits and figure out what's going on recently, uh, you can do like a riddle or a persuade to do that. Uh, for failure, there's not going to be much of a downside. If you roll an eye, the only downside is going to be that your eye awareness will probably go up. There's only one person that hasn't taken part, right? That's yeah. Airfield. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, as far as that goes, he could do something like Inspire, but I don't know what that would be for. Well, we I can have our room. Yeah, so he'll just, uh, he'll just talk to, like, basically go and buy some pipe weed, and smoke a pipe with a couple S of hobbits. Sit in the corner all, all air going like. Yeah, yeah, something <laughs> like that. Kind of try to figure out if I uh, can get any info gonna be a tough one. Yeah. We're Probably fucking not. so good tonight. Holy not shit. Much. <laughs> not much going on there. Well, we just need to stay the night. Once we get back on the road traveling, things will be much smoother then. I'll let Vidar do it too. He hasn't really been doing the contest, so. No, I was just dropping names and getting laughed at for it. What did we say? Uh, Either riddle or persuade. Oh, Torold. Oh, Brett. Unbelievable. Ah. Torold has a lot of good social skills, actually. We're so bad. There once was a dwarf from Nantucket. Let's see here. I guess we can wait for Brett. 
Yeah, just tell him to come on in the voice. You say you just got home. Alright, he's gonna head in. Hey man. Hello. Hello. Hey man, thanks for coming. I, it's cool, like, it, these sessions, if you have to be late, I'm t totally down with it. I know right. that li life happens, so. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's always more important to live your real life than make believe with Ian. <laughs> uh, so, just a quick summary. Um, let me get Torald's icon up here. Uh, so basically, there we go. Uh, basically, the long, long and short of it is you guys have headed north from Tharbad and gone up the Greenway. Uh, they made a, a travel roll um, on the way up. Uh, they've entered the Shire. Um, they have come to the first place they can actually sleep in a bed rather than on the side of the road. And so they've made their way to an inn in Michael Delving called the Bird and the Baby. Okay. And after that, uh, they convinced the barkeep uh, to give them a room for the night rather than have them sleep with the pigs. And uh, they did that because uh, Carol uh, said that he would kind of help in the kitchen and help repair things and do some do some tasks around the joint. Uh, then after that, uh, uh, what do we have? We had Donald, who sang a song. And Domino, who did some storytelling and fucked up royally. <laughs> <laughs> no, Carol sang a song, right? Yeah. To, yes. To kind of help things along and drew some business into the place. Uh, then there is a storytelling slash song contest because you're in the Shire now and everybody sits around smoking and drinking and telling stories. Uh, Domino failed miserably. He told a story about the Beaver Clan, scared some of the Hobbit kids. <laughs> uh, then Coral saved the day by... Uh, regaling said Hobbit kid with a song about himself, not nice. himself, but about small hobbits, and he did really, really good at that. And now everybody is having fun. Uh, the, and he won, he won the prize for the contest, which was a silver flagon worth two treasure that's oh, wow. rumored to be uh, from uh, that queer Hobbit out east in Hobbiton, Bilbo, who went to the Lonely Mountain and returned. It is a silver flagon of his that's rumored to be part of that treasure trove. And is, did I miss anything, guys? No, I think you're... The store all been with us the entire time, or was he behind yeah, us? Or... Yeah, yeah, he, he's with okay. you guys. He, he just left him. He's lagging behind. Just left him. <laughs> just been ignoring him. <laughs> Boy, Master Thorn, you've been so quiet. I barely knew you were here. I tend to be quiet. Uh, not much of a man of uh, for stories, although I've I've seen plenty of stuff to tell stories about. Um, well, I'm sure your stories are uh, much better than uh, Mr. <laughs> Domnall over there. I doubt you'd be scaring little children the way he does. I don't know. Uh, he would. He would. Um, so he'd. Uh, he'd say, I don't know. Uh, maybe. Maybe not. Some of my stories are a little less uh, appealing to children as others, but all of them are stories the same. Oh, really? well, we have a we have a place to stay tonight, and that's what matters. He would just nod in agreement. <laughs> So, um, Thorold, everyone kind of, as the night wore on, had the chance, if they chose, I mean, they weren't too involved in the festivities, to kind of like chat with the locals and figure out any rumors of what's going on, that sort of thing. So I'll give you a chance to do that since you're late to the game. It's sure. going to be either, either uh, uh, riddle either uh, uh, riddle or persuade, or I guess you use courtesy if you want to, or whatever you want to do to kind of chat up the, uh, the locals and um, try to figure out. You know what's going on and any, any local rumors. 
Alright, I'm gonna go for Riddle probably. Uh Your persuade's pretty high. <laughs> oh yeah, it is in mine. What? <laughs> uh, three, so what's the target three, number? Three favored. Yeah, three 14, favored. Fourteen. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, he's not, he's not weary. I'll let, you redo, I'll let you redo that one. Oh, Hang okay. on a second. Um, so, yeah, yeah, so not weary. Oh, I see that. I'll let you, I'll let you re-roll it. Uh, I reset your endurance, but I didn't. There you go. There you go. All right. So, I'm going to maybe send you a few things. He's over so there they, talking to a hobbit. Come on, tell me. Come on, tell me. <laughs> yeah. Come on, tell me. Just <laughs> <laughs> so it's a regular success? Yeah. So uh, so with a regular success, one of the hobbits tells you the story about um, how every once in a while elves will come through here. Uh, usually they're passing from east to west. Um, uh, nobody knows actually what they're up to, that sort of thing. Um, but uh, it's a sight to behold, and the hobbits like to go out at night, and sometimes they can see the, the elves traveling down the road. And also, as you kind of work the room, you kind of gather that this uh, this, this uh, kind of skinny-looking hobbit with slanted eyes who's sitting at the end of the bar, his name is Lotho, uh, Lotho Sackville. And Lotho Sackville hasn't been paying his... Uh, uh, hasn't been sharing his pipe weed or paying his bill. People are all pissed about it. Some of them <laughs> even, even uh, because you guys are bigger than everybody else, some of them are even, even offering you guys rewards uh, to, to teach him a lesson. All right. <laughs> In Hobbit fashion, of course. Not like a contract for his life, but yeah, know, kind of put him in his place. Rough him up. <laughs> Not rough him up, even. Just kind of embarrass him or, oh, okay. <laughs> or, or or make him share his pipe weed because it's really good stuff there from South Farthing, you know. <laughs> well, I heard that's called the uh, the Emerald Triangle of, of the Shire. <laughs> he's the type of he's the type of hobbit that like you know when somebody buys a round, he'll drink the round that everybody else buys, but he never buys a round. You buy him another one. <laughs> <laughs> What uh, so I'd probably share this with the rest of the guy, with the rest of the people, the the, the group. But yeah, um, so, yeah, the, the evening's wearing on, and the, the the contests are over, and that sort of thing. And everybody now has a big belly full of mead and bread and and uh, meat. Charcuterie boards have been served, I suppose. And uh, Hobbit charcuterie is known to be the best charcuterie. Um, and everybody's kind of digesting and almost ready to wind down for the night and twirled, kind of a. Uh, you know, what do you say to everybody? Um, I'd say something along the lines of uh, this this one hobbit over there is not it's not following quite the fashion of others. He's sort of uh, being a glutton and keeping to himself. Maybe we should uh, teach him a small lesson. Oh, Arvel shakes his head at that. Let's not dally in the business of these hobbits. We're just here for the night, and then we'll be on our way. Agreed. No need to cause trouble in a place we're not uh, from. For all we just nod his head. <laughs> so as you do that, you see, uh, uh, like, Lotho starts to get up from a stool. He's about ready to pay his tab. But he sees that the barkeep is busy with another cop's customer, so he just takes the coin, pockets it, and moseys on out the door and shuts the door behind him. <laughs> Bull <Bloody> dick. <laughs> Thoreau would look to Erevel and he would you gonna let that go unnoticed? If you wish to tell them that he skipped on his tab, be my guest. I am not here to Vidar gets up from the table. Down. He's got his tankard in hand. He saw that whole thing going on, and he immediately follows the hobbit outside. <laughs> Thorough to follow him as well. We won't cause any trouble. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here I go, causing trouble again. So, so Lotho, Lotho's outside, and uh, he shuts the door. He goes around the corner of the, the public house.
and uh and he just kind of um he he just like, like you hear him oh man who start he kind of pissing on the on the corner of the on the corner the corner and then uh, uh vidar vidar and thorold's shadows like shadows are pushed behind I buttons the fly turns oh yeah he says, can't you tall folk mind your own business and let a man uh, take a pin piece? <laughs> well, when you're done taking your piss, you need to return that money you owe to that man in the inside there. They've been a good host to us. Can't let you just steal from him and his family. That little boy in there, well... He needs to eat too, and you're taking money from him. Vidar will use his distinctive feature of fierce. <laughs> oh, okay. To, okay. <laughs> to uh, ensure that he understands how serious I am, that he needs to walk back inside and make sure that he's spending, uh, he's paying for his drinks and food. Oh, okay. And he's like, ah, very well. Fine, he says. My family sends up here so much pipe weed at such a good price. A few free pints of ale is not, no harm done. But as you wish, I'll go in and pay Mr. Brace Girdle. And he kind of jingles the coins around. and um, The guy's inside. Uh, um, so you, you guys hear the, uh, the door open again, and you see Lotho walk in and Thoral and Vidar behind him. And he goes up to the bar. Hey, Johnny, I forgot. Sorry about that. And he slaps a couple coins on the bar. And uh, Mr. Brace Girdle kind of looks at him and raises his eyebrow. And he says, have you had too much to drink, Lotho? And he's like, no, just a uh, sudden attack of conscience. That's all. That's all. And he kind of kind of disappears again. So I walk I back to the table and I, I nod over at barkeep. Big John. Harville <laughs> <laughs> is just like, ah, very well. I am going to retire. Let us be away from here before we cause more trouble. I am. You're, you're kind of causing a little bit of a stir, so I'm going to raise your eye awareness by one on that. What? <laughs> but... Both both Thorold and uh, Vidar get get an advancement point. Nice. <laughs> I'm gonna give you an extra travel one. We're gonna assume you passed. Now energetic and hardy, but I have travel travel fatigue, so I'll play for as long as I can, and reluctantly break free. <laughs> So you guys with, with with travel fatigue, since you're getting you got the bed and you 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 succeeded in that, I think you probably knowing the rules, you, it's like two plus whatever your heart is per night you can regain. So put yourself back to fresh. Zero fra zero travel fatigue. Mm -hmm. If you had to sleep out in the stables, you would have a not not be able to do that. And so you guys all retire upstairs and snuggle in close to <laughs> each other. It's not my pig horn you're grabbing. <laughs> <laughs> Should I call it the snake horn? <laughs> And so the next morning, you guys kind of kind of wake up and uh, head out, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. At this point, there's going to be a little cut scene.
I need to get a better one for Halberad. He looks like a dick. <laughs> Maybe he needs to be a dick. He kind of is a dick, but... <laughs> there you go. A good meaning dick. A dick douche. Well, cutscene. Willward and his band of tyrants joked as they jostled in their saddles. They were drawing near to Estelden over these long many days. Winter was still in its last throes, and the ground was muddy and uneven. Eventually, the company arrived. What they saw both amazed and inspired them. The small mountain stronghold that they expected was now a burgeoning town. Many of Estelden's ruined towers have been repaired, and brave men stood watch from the high places. Carts went this way and that, drawing wagons laden with supply of food or ore. Indeed, War may be coming to this land, but not yet. After stabling their horses, Wilward sought the audience of Halvorad. Greetings, Wilward. Our scouts reported that you and your band of tyrants would soon pay our humble abode a visit. It has been too long, friend, said Halvorad. He rose from his chair and clasped the ranger in embrace. Tell me, how has been the Southern Watch? Does Tharbad continue to grumble? Oh, if there would come a day that it would rise again. I know Aravu and his elder brother wish it so. And I suppose the Prince of Cardolan sent you, no? Then Wilward looks surprised as a tall, lean elf steps out of the shadows. Ooh. Halberad laughs. Ha <laughs> ha! You are swift, my friend. But the folk of Mithland and Imladris are swifter yet. Indeed, this is Galdor. Galdor of the Havens, they call him. He was a guest in Elrond's house when word came from one of Erevul's companions that he wished forces to be sent north. It seems that Imladris has agreed, but in their own manner. Halbarad nodded his head, and I concur with him, reluctantly. Right now is too soon to set siege, but we will join with the elves in harrying the enemy. Wilward then added, The company of the Kingsville has gathered an army of Dunlendings willing to fight. And we shall, answered Halbarad. And we will continue to swell our numbers. But the time is not yet ripe. Not yet ripe. Then there's a fade of the scene. Looks fancy. <laughs> Looks elvish. Makes great the things, things, baby. Yes. As you ride out of Mickle Delving in the morning, you may seem to sense that you are leaving something precious behind. Indeed, the Shire life is easy, and hobbits don't concern themselves with the wondrous events of the wide world. They're instead content to keep to themselves, besides gossiping about their friends and relatives, of course. And most hobbits place more value on good food and drink shared in the company of friends rather than hoarded treasure. But is this idyllic shire that you protect, without hard men, dwarves, and elves in hard times, and heroic deeds, all would be lost. For as a halfling town with its hobbit holes and public houses grows small, small behind you, you again realize the urgency of your mission. Darkness grows in the north, and it does not rest. By midday, you're well into the white down. Here and there, lush green landscape of spring is broken by copses of trees, 
that are just beginning to regain their leaves. The hills are sometimes half eroded, revealing the whitest chalky soil that gives this region its name. You stop only briefly to water your horses and then eat a hurried lunch and strike west along the east road again. The sun has now risen overhead and is sinking into the west as you traverse the tower hills. Now you must keep to the road, for on either side of you white cliffs rise into the dusk and the country is uneven and treacherous for horses. Finally, after cresting a large hill circled with yellow flowers, you can see that the land on the west slopes gently downward, and within the hills stand three towers, proud and tall, and silhouetted against the setting sun. Furthermore, two parties besides yourself can be spied along the road. The first is perhaps a half mile down the road from you, while the other still may be two or more miles away beyond the town. Both are mounted and cloaked and appear gray in the encroaching evening light. Anything you guys want to do RP-wise or otherwise well, I'm going to do a check for something? Yeah, I mean, Arable just kind of looks with caution. I do not know who goes there from this vantage. We should be wary. My, I can't quite make out who that might be. I don't think it's an army, though. Doesn't look equipped so. I think they mean to conceal themselves intentionally, which raises more questions. We roll on anybody... war, is that what we're doing? Yeah, yeah, anybody that wants to. <clears throat> Say, uh, Aravul. You haven't done anything successful yet, really. Hmm? So it'd actually I, be most... I should Yep. It's actually great, great, great success. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mr. Araville, tell us, who is that? <laughs> Araville's still waiting for his handout. <laughs> I had it in my pocket here, I'm looking, hold on. This is just information you might want to glance over at first before RP. Let me squint. Yes, well, it appears these are elves. They're in a pilgrimage to the towers, the White Towers. They were a gift from Gilgalad long ago to both to the king of Arnor and Gondor in the days of old. He kind of shrugs. This was Linden, as I recall stories from my father he kind of like looks up we should not interrupt them perhaps but maybe they would hold information that would be useful to us hmm. Dunnings are kind of wary of elves aren't they oh god yeah I think everybody is <laughs> Well, I think, uh, my understanding, Dunning's even more so, maybe, because they're... Yeah. They probably have never seen one, even, but... Well, well, I think we should go around this lot. I don't think I need to get this close to any elves tonight. Narvel says, yes, perhaps I should go alone. I perhaps can speak to them. In our stead. And as you say that, there's a little cutscene. And the camera like zooms forward like half a mile. 
and now you're among the elves. You can hear them talk, and there's a scene that takes place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Arthanor rides his back straight, the setting sun at his rear towards the white towers that grow in the gloom. With him are his brethren, and among them many elves of even higher stature than himself. Chief among these is Glorfindel. Alas, we have arrived, Arthanor. It's been too long since our gaze strayed to the west. I am heartened by Elastirian still stands. He gazes upwards at one of the towers, and the stars will be bright tonight. Indeed, fortune has favored us. But on this journey, I have not yet had a chance to speak with you as I had hoped. I still wonder about that halfling you so love, and how he came to be in your company, and the number of our kind that Elrond sent north. I sense that even evil times are ahead, even if this night grants us some small respite. Doing my usual thing of falling out. It would appear that uh, I am involved in this conversation. What am I miss? You are involved, Arthur. <laughs> oh, man. Basically, just asked you about the Hobbit, how, how you got involved with him. That's what the gist was. Yeah. He, he also mentions like an allusion to Elastirian. Um, so, uh, if you got an extraordinary assess, you would know this on your lore, but. Uh, Arthanor would probably know this. Elastirian is one of the three towers, the highest one. And atop that tower is still one of the Palantirs, one of the Seeing Stones. And the elves from time to time will, will make a pilgrimage to this tower and, and use that to gaze out across the Great Sea. And they're rumored to be able, even be able to see glimpses of Valinor through that. And so every once in a while, the elves on a clear night will come out here to be able to gaze across to the west. But uh, Glorfindel basically has brought his horse up next to Arthanor, is kind of asking him about, you know, what's going on and how the Hobbit came to be in his company and uh, why he thinks Elrond is willing to send some force north, no matter how small. Well, Glorfindel, I cannot speak to the intentions of our, our Lord Elrond as far as aiding the rangers in the north. I suppose he thinks it important, and to an extent I must agree. But beyond that, I'm unaware of his true intentions. As to the Hobbit, well, he was part of the company that I was engaged with while I was uh, serving my mission in the north with the rangers. Probably one of the most useful of the bunch, and well likable as well. <laughs> I did not agree with the dwarf or the ranger. They were uh, as expected. Glorfindel kind of nods and listens and smiles, and he says that I have known many of these halflings in my day, and you're wise to befriend him. I think you may find that he's made of sterner stuff even than most men and dwarves. Yes, evidence has all presented itself to me that makes that the case. He is certainly a sterner stuff than the ranger. <laughs> Lorfindel kind of smirks and says, Be not too quick to judge, Arthanor, for the life of men is fleeting. They are given to rashness, but there is valor within some of them. It may be that by the end of days, the fate of all Middle-earth may rest in their hands. I shudder to think that there will be such a day. So Glorfindel kind of just doesn't answer that. And at this point, that the elf party that's closest to the tower is able to kind of pull up their horses and in this area. They kind of start to dismount from their steeds and way down the road, the other, the other group is still kind of approaching, coming from the, uh, coming from the west. And so, uh, is uh, Erevul going to hang back and see what happens, or kind of approach them? I'll, uh... I'll ride my horse forth slowly. And call out. So all the other ones are kind of hanging back a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not getting close to any, any elves. 
Vidar does not want to get near, you know, a group of elves. Yeah, Marvel yells out. Uh, I'm echoing to somebody. Right, Wolf. But, and so he, he calls out. Yeah, that's Wolf. Uh, he calls out, Hail! And he kind of just waits for them to recognize him. So, so Glor Glorfindel, like, probably was aware of your presence a long time ago and okay. just kind of turns and his keen eyes, especially in the, in the dark, have seen you approach for a long time and he kind of sizes you up. He says, Hail, who goes there upon this road at this hour? Not many come to the Tower Hills, for the land is treacherous. Arthur knows who that voice belongs to. Aravul, son of Arafel, I am traveling to Er Luin. And says, there are a. Uh, my fellowship is waiting behind some ways not to disturb your pilgrimage. Glorfindel turns to Arthur and says, the ranger you spoke so highly of? Unfortunately, and I would go forward, it is a surprise, Arvul, son of Arafel, that I do not find you dead yet. I am, I suppose, pleasantly surprised. What and brings you to these parts? Arvul looks at Arthanor and gives him a very blank stare and says, It was not without trying. <laughs> and says... I am headed to Ered Lewin to enlist the aid of the dwarves in our venture. Uh, I'm just sort of. Uh, I suppose there are desperate times. Yes, it is desperate times. I have not heard of how successful you were in your quest to uh, request aid of your lord. Ah, well, as it would so happen, Lord Elrond had considered my appraisal of the situation and believed that I was correct that we should not siege during the winter. He has sent a force. He uh, has some pity for you, I suppose. Perhaps it is pity, perhaps it is wisdom. None knows but he himself. He but knows. they are being sent there to harry the enemy for now. It is not your plan, which I must say was quite crude, Ranger, to attack during winter. I did not suggest it. I have a force of Dunlandines in camp near the Grave Flood. If I wished it, I would have marched them up the road and attacked during the winter, but no. You collect many shabby folk, but I suppose, once again, desperate times. I collect as many folk as I can that will fight the enemy. Those with been... heart and courage to do so. Glorfindel breaks in a little bit and says, Arthur, your tongue is ever hasty. The... the, uh... The time horizon of men is shorter than ours. They are quicker, quicker to wrath and quicker to peace, quicker to love even, which may not be counted as a downfall. Can you vouch for this man's nobility? Is he safe among us? <sighs> yes, I suppose. And he says, then his friends too shall be welcome. They can come here with us beneath the stars. I do not think they pose any risk to our company. For we are the Eldar, and we do not frighten easily of men, dwarf, or other beings that may creep in the night. Indeed. So does our does Arvel know who this is he's speaking to? I'm assuming probably, not. No. Probably not. Yeah. Uh, unless you want to make uh, a lore, lore if you want. 
Oh, that's right. Because sure. he's pretty. There's something about him that's like. Right. Well, he's bossing Arthur. Yeah, he's bossing Arthur. Right now. So we uh. like him. <laughs> Shit, that's worth hope, so. Yeah, so you don't know who he is. Arvel just simply says, uh, My lord, I... apologies, but I did not catch your name. He says, Well met, Ranger. My name is Glorfindel. He nods. Well met, my lord. You will have no troubles from any of us. So he looks up the road and then, So, so beckon your friends. The company from the Grey Heavens should be here any moment. And as you look down the road, you can see that they're only a couple hundred yards, a couple hundred yards away, and they're kind of winding their way towards you. And so Arvel kind of stands in the saddle and kind of waves backwards, like waving towards himself, telling them to come forward. Vidar looks around at everyone else. These shabby like, folk. Do you is he, is he pointing at us? <laughs> <laughs> Just kind of looking side to side. Thorald would uh, pipe up and, and say, uh, I would hope so. I don't see anybody else around us. <laughs> oh. Oi! Are you talking to us? Oh, God. <laughs> he just waves back to you to come without screaming. <laughs> Glorfindel kind of shoots Arthur or a glance like, you know, maybe you're you're right. <laughs> I, I, I think he is talking to us. Oh. And I would nod knowingly, getting his getting the implication. So as Carl and Domino and Thorold and Vidar kind of join up, um, the other band of elves kind of arises at this point. And among their column, the first horse, um, sitting back straight with a gray cloak, and the, now the, the moon is starting to rise, um, is a being that's almost shimmering in the, in the moonlight. Mm, you're getting and, the feels right now, the Lord of the Rings feels. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he's coming up ahead of this column, and um, he brings his cloak back, and his hair is white. And he is the first elf anybody here has ever seen that actually has a beard. And so, um, you guys can all do a lure. Sure. See who he is. Boy, that elf there's got a beard. Oops. Oh, come on. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> and eye awareness goes up one. <laughs> Do you know? So, the other ones might not realize this, but Erevu automatically knows who this is. This is Kyrdan, the, the shipwright. Glorfindel is ancient, and Kyrdan, I think, is even more ancient. The thing with Glorfindel is he's kind of been reborn once. So his first incarnation is like super old, first, you know, slayed Balrogs up in Beleriand and that sort of thing. But Kyrdain is, is older than Elrond, older than Galadriel. And he still looks young in the face, but he's actually been able to grow a beard, which is his distinctive feature. And so uh, Erevul automatically recognizes this. Aww. <laughs> Yeah, so he basically, his eyes go wide as he um, basically had heard the legends of Kyrdan and uh, bringing people from the west um, and whatnot, right? And he kind of look, looks at the others who probably have no idea what the significance of this is, and he simply just kind of stays quiet. And at this point... Um, the shabby folk are kind of there as Kyrdan's proud steed marches its way up to join all of you and Kyrdan dismounts from his horse and takes off his cloak and again he seems, seems to almost shimmer in the moonlight and he says, Lo, Glorfindel 
At last we meet under the stars. I have heard rumors from the east and from Imladris. It seems Lord Elrond's house is troubled. Is it true that he has sent some number of our kin north? Glorfindel kind of agrees and tells him what's going on. Círdan kind of gives a somber nod and says, I am afraid that dark days are ahead, but we can enjoy this night as we have so many times before. Perhaps the gaze across the west will lift our spirits. And Gl Glorfindel kind of introduces Arthenor and uh, looks to Erevul. And he says, Ranger, this is Círdan the Shipwright, Lord of the Grey Havens. Yes, my lord. And he nods. I recognized him from the many tales I have heard from my father and his father and others. And he bows deeply and respects Círdan. I am Aravul, son of Arafel doesn't really give his title. Kind of lifts his eyebrows and says, The blood of Cardolan. Yes, my lord. I have not considered your line for many long years, but know that I fought with your kin in the Elder Days in defense of Fornost ere it fell, and perhaps it will rise again. But these are dark days, and this night is not for dark dealings. Please, let their, your friends introduce themselves. Then he looks to, especially the Dunlendings. <laughs> he knows. And no. He's, he's, and he basically gives Vidar the eye of behave, right? <laughs> <clears throat> Doesn't say anything. Let's them introduce themselves. Well, we're all awestruck, it seems. I'll go ahead and do <laughs> Domino. Um, he's uh, a bit... I think he might have heard about elves, but I don't think he's ever seen one. So this is kind of a culture shock for Domino, I think. And He composed himself. <clears throat> I am Domino Morganic of Clan Beaver to the south. It is an honor to be in your presence. And he's you know, sort of bows, but he does, Dylan things are, I don't think Dylan things kneel very much, so, he would bow, but not kneel. Carol's totally captivated with this guy's hair, and sta staring at it intently. Not that he's jealous of the hair, he's just totally confused, and trying to figure out why it isn't stuck up and spiked. <laughs> but, but because usually the only way you get that is the Dunleydens they would they would line their hairs up to make them white, but it would always be like spiky. This guy has like naturally flowing luminescent hair, so he's like distracted by his hair initially. But when there's introductions to be made, he's proper, but at the same time he's friendly because he is just a simple folk, so he'll actually reach out to shake his hand, and he'll just go like that. He says, I'm Carl Braddock Donald Goddard of Clan Gleaver. He says, it's a pleasure and an honor to meet your acquaintance. As he does that, Kirdan just gets a really, like, a warm smile that, that you, uh, and you suddenly get Carol gets a kind of a feeling of, of feeling very safe in this moment like that uh no matter how small he is these elves uh kind of understand his plight so dom domino and carol i want you to do courtesy checks okay. <laughs> oh fuck it's not it's, it's just basically to see if you get kind of invited <laughs> 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 uh, oh yeah, there you oh, go. Can't deal with the shit out of that one. <laughs> oh baby. Sorry, kill. You're not cool enough. <laughs> they didn't understand what you said. <laughs> okay. It was a warm smile out of pity. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so Vidar, Vidar, and Thorold. Only the real uh, master elf. Uh, well, I, I I usually don't have much to say to, to elves, uh, but uh, well, uh, I'm I'm Vidar, um, son of Godar. And uh, it's it's nice to meet you. I, I don't I don't quite trust Dells, but uh, I, I reckon <laughs> I trust an elf with a beard just a little more than an elf with no beard. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's so true. Oh, shit. You probably would though. You trust him more That's than so elf. That's so true. Elf. <laughs> Our heart it looks disgusting. <laughs> Absolutely disgusting. All right, why don't you roll your courtesy then? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Gandalf, Gandalf doesn't become elf. Gandalf it. Vidar, elf friend. No. Oh. <laughs> I think that's fitting. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a dwarf too, so they just kind of nod and look to the man from Dale. <laughs> <laughs> exactly as we expected. Next. <laughs> Next. Uh, Thorold would nod his, uh, would pretty much like bow his head. And after that warm, uh, warm introduction, uh, my name is Thorold of uh, the city of Dale. And he would uh, just nod his head in, in uh, respect to the to the elves. All right, roll yours. <laughs> oh my god. We're doing real good tonight, boys. Oh god. They're offended by how I smell or something. <laughs> you have a bunch of snot coming out of your nose. <laughs> Gee, mister, it's nice to meet you. <laughs> you got that vulgar strand just flapping while he's talking. <laughs> So it's kind of my beard. Kirdan just makes a comment about how how strange these times are and how it has cast disparate groups together and it's uh it is an omen that that such a party has come forth tonight, this uh starlit night beneath the stars, and there's lots of stars and moonlight and all that sort of stuff. And so uh kind of some lutes begin to play and there's the uh elvish wine that's being passed around and everybody's just kind of relaxing on this on this hillside and and eventually uh glorfindel kind of rises and he invites uh let's see that gandalf he was just gandalf rude what am i going to do yeah, he's just Erevil and domnal right yeah yeah Erevil and domnal um so glorfindel approaches Erevul and says this fellow that's with you, this man of Dunland, I know little of their kind even over my long years. What is his position with his people? He is a chieftain, my lord. And he kind of nods and says, Ah, finally that makes sense then. And you have gathered no small number from their clans to the south? Yes, my lord. It is with... Uh... It was the closest group of people I could raise for the, in, the eventual defense of Irador. And yes, we have brought the clans together in order to bolster our numbers against the foul beasts. And then Glorfindel says, very well then, then he will join us. As you wish, my lord. He nods. At this point, Arthanor and Glorfindel and Círdan and a number of the elves kind of rise and start to walk up one of these grassy hills to right to here to the entrance of uh, of the tro of the tallest tower. Right there. Yeah. Arvul goes to Dom and kind of pulls him aside. Círdan, or it was Glorfindel talking. That's what he says. Mm -hmm. uh, the one called Glorfindel, he wished you to join us, and the elves 
to see the sight. I am not exactly sure what we will see, but it will certainly be nothing that you and I ever see again. Do you trust these folk? Yes. Kyrdan, and he nods to the bearded elf, and he's like, is a famous and legendary figure. He is thousands of years old. Immortal even, like the elves, but even more so. It is difficult to explain, but know that these men will do us no harm. Or these these elves will do us no harm. And his eyes would go wide at the whole thousands of years thing. But... Well... I do not know if I trust these elven folk, but I trust Erevul of Erefel. I will go with you. He puts a hand on your shoulder. And he... You're about to see something that, well, I doubt very many men have ever seen. Cannot deny that I am eager to see it myself. Come. Freezing. But yeah, I'll go with you. What did I say? <laughs> Not many men have seen what you're about to see. <laughs> <laughs> He's breathing heavy while he does it. I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm very excited. I said it. Oh, how excited I am. And so Vidar and Carol and Thorold are left with the elves and their lutes and their wine in the moonlight as the others kind of make this long journey up this huge spiral staircase going up and up and up. And as they do so, they pass all these windows and moonlight is coming in through the windows and it's kind of illuminating the air and there's this almost like luminescence to the whole moment. And eventually you get to the very top of this tower and even looking across the tower, you can see all the way to the, the, the east kind of Underneath this full moon, there's the Shire and the rolling hills, and kind of closer to you is the Tower Hills, and then beyond the Shire, there's just there's mountains and brown lands, and and then it then the kind of fit, it fades away, and then when you're looking out to the west, you see that the Tower Hills kind of taper to a plain, and there's you see a bunch of of rivers kind of glinting in the moonlight, and the you see the Gulf of Loon and the, the River of Loon, which is your destination that will take you up to the dwarves. And the sea just ends in the horizon. And at this point, Kirdan kind of comes up and takes the lead. And, and you see at the top of this tower, this, this orb that has this deeply, deep kind of reddish orange glow into the middle of it. And there's kind of blackness and the swirling around its circumference and a little bit of violet. Would I have any idea what a plant here is? Exactly. Uh, let's do a. Oh, I'm not going to make you check actually, since you since you passed it. You know what this is. You know it's probably a palantir, and so you can explain to the others. You know, to Domhol, your stupid friend, what it is. <laughs> <laughs> he can't, he like nods towards it. And he's like, "That is a palantir. They are." Well, how do I say this? And it's basically it's the only one left besides the one in Minas Tirith and Orthanc. Yeah. That's... There are three of them that remain that I have heard of. Uh, these things can see many things many miles away. It is a magical device. Used by elves and wizards. He's is staring at it kind of reverently himself, right? And the hair on Domhnall's neck sort of standing up that mentions those things, because those are usually bad news for, for dumb endings, as he's been taught. He's kind of shivers a bit, but he's just nods at Erbil's words. And as they talk, kind of Glorfindel and Círdan kind of go over to it and lay their left hand on the orb and kind of gaze off to the west. And there's almost a cloud that comes over their eyes. And they seem to be looking at the far-off lands and that sort of thing. Um, it's just... <laughs> it's like that that picture with 
Trump and all the Arab states around that board. Okay, so Arthur Nur can do this. Um, sure. So here's the thing. Uh, you can gaze to the west and maybe see Valinor. This will be like a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Arthur Nur, the elf, is TN, is going to be 12, and it's going to be a wisdom check, okay? Mm-hmm. If you succeed, something good will happen. If you fail, something bad will happen. If you fail really bad, something bad will happen. Oh, God. So uh, don't uh, I. Uh, oh, yeah. Time to fuck shit up. There oh, you go. baby. He cannot fail. God. I... Woo. <laughs> it sucks when I have to root for another player to fail. I'm having a hard time holding these alligators down. He's like the chieftain of all the Dunlendings. He, this, this makes a little little sense, at least. No, yeah, Arthanor. That was Arthanor. Yeah, that was Arthanor's rule. That was Arthanor. Oh. That makes sense, too. So. Makes a whole lot more sense than the Dunlending chief. <laughs> yeah, his brain is going to be fried, and then I'm going to feel bad. <laughs> oh, the, the other one's is Wisdom, uh, and it's 14, though. Um, okay, so let's do Dumb, though. And I guess we... Alright, time to actually fuck up. Yeah. Could hope it, but I don't think you can hope those, actually. Mm -hmm. Nope. They can't see shit, dog. I see London. I see fans. <laughs> I see Dom Noble's underpants. <laughs> Go on, Arable. Do it. Arable. Oh my god, I'm nervous. <laughs> 14 for me. Mm -hmm. Nice. Wow. Yeah, he approaches the plant here and like very kind of cut. He looks nervous for sure. And then he like slowly reaches out and puts his hand on the on the orb. So as as Domino does it, he touches it and he feels this just chill spread from his fingers up his arms down his spine. He just feels this just like feeling of the slimy feeling of something unwholesome and he's smart enough to pull his hand away. But this feeling is just gonna stay with him and it's just he knows it's not good. So give yourself a shadow point. Okay. Oh so Domino gets a shadow point. And the others probably glance way across the sea and you can elaborate on what you see but those are some of the things Tolkien has written about the looking across the sea and and Valinor uh, Arthur just in his head he just sees uh... Oh, no, it's it's Arthur's business what he sees you see Arthur if you if anyone's watching smiling I guess Domino or other people who are done with their little, their, uh, Palantir grabbing. Arvold just kind of says to no one in particular that it was incredible. And appreciate the, the gift of this to me. And he kind of, like, thinks about it for a moment, and kind of a wave of sadness hits him, knowing that he would never see such a thing after he perishes from this realm. Kirdan kind of turns to Aravul and says, I sense that your heart is heavy, Prince of Cardolan. Know that you may never see the true West with the eyes of an elf, but know that this ideal is even within the hearts of men. It is this ideal that your sword flashes for, and that you fight for and strive against the darkness. Keep this vision with you. It will be your hope in times of need. Yes, my lord. Hudson takes a deep breath and... Hands of attention, essentially. 
All right. And after everybody's done with their Valinor bong hits, they all <laughs> <laughs> kind of come down from the come down from the towers, and uh, the evening can go to go. Yeah. And if there's nothing else for you, nothing else you more you want more from the elves, then we'll kind of continue on with the journey. I've got no business with the elves. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do like that one's beard. <laughs> <laughs> that is Kirden Vidar. He is one of the oldest elves. In Middle Earth, that's not the oldest. I do not know. Well, if he's the oldest, he should have a longer beard. <laughs> like, Technically, yes. I'm longer than any other elf. <laughs> <laughs> he just kind of shrugs. We should make camp here. We'll go in the morning. Agree. And uh, is Arthanor nearby? Mm-hmm. So he would approach Arthanor and he says, What is your plan next? Will you be returning to Irador or will be or will you be going back to the right here? What's that? And ghost. They yeah, drop. I think so. I think that's why I said that. He, 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 <sighs> Fine. Damn it, coast. <laughs> Will you be returning or shit? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just wait a second. See what I want to know what Arthur says. Does Arthur know what to say? <laughs> so basically, just kind of want to know if he wants to kind of hang out in the Grey Havens for a while, if he wants to head back to the Mladeris and join up back up with. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, this shit's so awful tonight. I'm back. What what's the uh, what's the place I can never remember the name? Rivendell? No, no. <laughs> the place we're building. Estelden. Estelden. Okay. So Arvul seeks out Arthanor. A moment, Arthanor, as he approaches. I suppose. What is your plans? What has your lord bidden you to do? Are you to Return to Estelden, or will you be returning, or not? What are my plans, Bo? <laughs> it's up to you. But uh, basically, you just kind of came out here on the on the pilgrimage to see the White Tower. It would be not unusual for elves to do that every once in a while, and then head back to Rivendell. But if you yeah. wanted to stay in the Grey Havens with uh, Kirdan for a little bit, or do something else, I'd be fine with that too. You gotta go back and get Tuk Tuk. You I might do. want to do that. Yeah, you might want to do, do that. But... Oh, well, as much as I enjoy being in good company here, I will probably return to Rivendell in even better company and then head back to worse company, meaning that I would return to your hole of a city to the north with the Hobbit in tow, if he wishes to leave Rivendell anyway. Erebel will probably like wonders like why Arthur can't be more like these other guys. Yeah, <laughs> we're at least polite, even though they. Why indeed. <laughs> Arvel nods. Says, "We could use your spear." On that we agree. <laughs> yes, I would return soon. He nods. Says. Until that day, then. 
Yes, mind yourself, Ranger. No need to die at this portion. Um, a man does not know his fate. Hopefully we will meet again. I would nod. And I would leave him. <laughs> Alright, anybody else want to do anything? Or otherwise I'll move forward. He's drinking wine. Elf wine is good shit, by the way. It's like... I know. Gonna say good. You should play. You should play the pig for <laughs> <laughs> Dom Noble is probably just gonna sort of keep to himself. He had a bit of a harrowing experience with the Palantir. Thank God the moon is out shining and illuminating everything. Stunlinens hate darkness. They're very superstitious. And being around white-haired, glow-in-the-dark individuals with <laughs> demonic-shaped ears. Yeah, he's gonna keep to himself. But once he smells the wine, his curiosity will get the better of him. They share wine, he'll fall in love with it. Oh, er er Erebu and Arthur, by the way, give yourself one hope. Nice. Which is, hey, I'm, I'm gonna try something a little unorthodox here. Mm. Uh -oh. It's not, it's <laughs> not, it's not in the rules, but using a palantir and seeing Valinor, I think, would give you a hope. Plus, yeah. if, if you would have gotten an eye, you would have gotten three shadow points so <laughs> oh baby i see you mm. <laughs> uh. so that didn't happen which is good all right Vidar is ready to go Though the most recent night may have passed in comfort and good company beneath the stars, and though your heart may have been lifted by the food and drink and song of the Eldar, you are on an urgent errand. You set off on, you set off on the next morning, and with the white towers to your left, you continue west. As you do, there is a cool breeze in your face, and with it is the faint trace of salt. For on these winds, after rolling over countless blue miles of the great sea, have rose up the road from the Gulf of Loon. If you continued west until the end of the road, you would have ended at Mithland, otherwise known as the Grey Havens. But your task now takes you northward. You leave the road and start upon smaller paths. They're often broken and bent, and here and there are strangled with brambles of thorns, and at times they become treacherous. Eventually, the elevation increases. You must dismount, though your horses continue to gladly serve as beasts of burden. If the first leg of your journey was pleasant and relatively carefree, this part is more daunting. The distance you covered riding upon a good road in four days now takes sunrise to sunset, and you are forced to camp when the sun sinks into the west, which is now dominated by the Blue Mountains. Eventually, one day, you hear running water ahead. So, so I want somebody to either do a lore or travel check. Just one of us. Yeah. Nice. Oh God, damn! Vidar, <laughs> <laughs> bam! Wow. I know these roads. I know these paths. These are my people's lands. Uh, extraordinary success. Fuck. You guys are getting... You kill it. All right. So you... 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 Uh, you... Continue north. And as you come to the River Loon, like, you know, 10, 12, 20 miles north of the Gulf, um, uh, Vidar guides you, and he has known these lands from the Air Loon, and maybe has traveled here 
a time or two. And so he's able to, at first he goes to his like most trustworthy Ford and he sees that the thawing of the snow has made this too high and it would be too dangerous for the horses and you to, to ford there. And another one, and like, oh, this one's a little better. And then finally upstream, he finds a good ford that's only like calf deep. And so you and all your horses are able to cross across the river without any problems. And as you do so, like the the, the water is just super cold on your on your boots and it's fresh. And so you cross the river and go about your your business. Is that because of the extraordinary success? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> Otherwise, we would have been washed away. <laughs> oh, there'd be some bad things that could have happened. But <laughs> fine. Yeah, Sarval leads his horse across and nods to Vidar. Good night's rest, huh? <laughs> no. Way. Mm. All right. So at this point, you guys need to make a second travel check. So are we all doing travel checks, or because I'm I'm a little confused. I thought that only the guide did travel checks, and everybody else did uh, whatever their role was. I know. I think everybody. So as the journey kind of continues, you make these. You get. You can get travel fatigue, and so what happens is. Um, if somebody rolls an eye, it will trigger a hazard. Hmm. And they're in that hazard, and then you roll for like you roll for which yeah, roll okay. has to actually make the check. I see. And that that's you hunt hunt, explore, all yada yada hmm. yada. Okay. And then if they fail that, then something bad happens. Okay. So right now everyone's rolling a travel. Yep. Airvul pass. Now, what you could do, Airvul, is a Thorold pass, so he doesn't take travel fatigue. I'm energetic and hardy. <laughs> uh, that doesn't count for travel rolls. But what you can do, Tet, is you can donate your extra dice to uh, Ian. I'll do that. So Ian, roll a d6. Oh, <laughs> that's fine. I think you only take two. You only take two fatigue. And nobody rolled an eye. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I got an extraordinary success or a, or a great success. Actually, you know what, Carol? If on these travel rolls during a journey somebody gets an extraordinary great success, they can they can donate that success to somebody else. So, oh, that's right. Yeah. Yes, I will uh, donate my success to Carol. So you guys are all good. Start talking to me about your dwarven homeland cheer my spirits when you see me starting to I'll walk walk next to you down the path aye that water's cold be All brisk right. it won't be much longer now you'll see keep his spirits up start going blue lipped after crossing the river <laughs> <laughs> so yeah as you kind of continue up and up like not that doesn't even feel like spring anymore right there's like the, uh, the the trees start to kind of get smaller and shorter and sparser, and every now and then there's like a wisp of snow still on the ground, and streams coming down from the mountains are super cold, but are refreshing, and your horses seem to like it as they stop to take a drink. Um, but so this the part from the river Loon to to where you're going actually takes eight days, whereas the other part of your journey only took like. Not it was super uh, so much longer, but since you're on a horse and good road, you made it in like a week, right? Mm -hmm. And so you're going through this rough land, and um, so you're going to make camp one night, and mm -hmm. so 
I want somebody to make it doesn't matter who but if you click on your token you should be able to roll hazard mm -hmm. so anyone I did it okay Carol so huntsman who's the huntsman that is Carol cool cool I think Carl yeah yeah, I gotta do my hair, my hazard, or...? No. So what I want you to do... Um... So I want you to... Alright, let's see here. Let me consult my table. While you're doing that. All right, here we go. So you guys camp one night underneath underneath this like rocky crag. You're getting closer and closer to the mountains. There's like a shallow cave, right? And so you, you're running a little bit low on food. And you know, you send uh you send uh Kyrel out to go and get some food. And so he emerges from this cave and starts creeping around this rocky crag, uh, looking for something to eat. And so then I want you to roll a hunting at 14. I have tracking. That's, that's hunting. Hope or no hope. Do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to get low, though. Oh, uh, yeah, that'll add seven to the total. <laughs> Spend one. All right. So, as you go forth into the uh, into into the the mountains, kind of like pretty near near your camp, you see like this. Uh, this mountain goat that kind of goes up a path and stops and kind of looks at you and he goes further up the mountain and you follow him and you're just about ready to shoot this thing when you look up and there's this giant roost of bats like overhead over you there's kind of hanging from this shallow cave and so you're ready to get this shoot this goat nearby and so you just ease off on your bowstring you backpedal a little bit and you go out for easier quarry and then later in the day you return with a with a uh, with a very small deer for your company nice yeah, Arvel nods and Helps skin it or whatever. Looks like meat's back on the menu, boy. <laughs> <laughs> mutton again, not mutton again. <laughs> what about again? their legs? They don't need those. <laughs> I want me a goat burger. <laughs> so you guys uh, pass the night unmolested by anything untoward? Oof, good. And kind of uh, get up in the morning and continue the last leg of your journey. Oh, I swear we're almost there. You'll see. The great halls of my people will welcome us. That looks pretty welcoming. <laughs> I've heard this song. No, we don't. My main character in Lord of the Rings Online was a dwarf guardian. I, play, I played that for like uh, 45 minutes the other day.
Almost has a slow Conan sound to it from the motion picture. Yeah. At long length, the blue mountains draw nearer, and, weary though you may be, they do appear beautiful in the midday sun. You have risen in elevation, and the temperature has dropped noticeably. Indeed, there's no sign of spring here. Instead, whips of white snow cling to stone and crag as you struggle up a path that winds this way and that. Finally, above you is a crafted bridge of granite and gray stone. It crosses a deep ravine and then seems to disappear into the mouth of the mountain. Alas, you've come to the home of the dwarves. Of the so I want to make a lore check. What's Thorold's lore? Uh, it's only a one, so probably best for someone else. <laughs> yeah, who has the highest lore? Uh, I got two. That's you, then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey! Boom. Regular success? Yeah. All right. Banging. Waiting your... Here comes your hand out. <laughs> <laughs> again, again, it's just some information. You can RP it out if you want. Oi, Arrowville. Tell us about these holes. <laughs> One minute. <laughs> hey Ranger, you know anything about this place that I'm from? I'm touching, I'm, I'm touching. Iron Hills, man. He's maybe no, been here, maybe. They all look the same to me. I'm sorry. I'm touching everything here. The damn stonework, the intricate carvings on it and stuff, just totally going fangirl on this. Oh, tidy work, tidy work. Oh, truly splendid. What did I tell you? Great halls. See, the dwarven kind of not put much stock in wood for their their uh, developments. Wood, wood bends and wood breaks. Stone, stone that will stand forever. I could argue with you, but it's your home, not mine. Yeah, so Arvul says, as last I remembered. The king was is Thorn Oakenshield, and he kind of looks around and doesn't really say much else. His father has disappeared, attempting to wait. I, I'm kind of confused. Is is this before or after the Hobbit? It's a, it's after. So Thorn is the king of. Blue Mountains. Uh, he, so he was. So I don't think his handout things work. I've never. Done before. I was just trying it. So basically, the deal with this place is that, well, before the Hobbit took place, so the dwarves were in the Lonely Mountain, right? The mm -hmm. Smaug came. Okay, Smaug came and displaced them, and there were always dwarves in the Blue Mountains, but most of the ones from the Lonely Mountain fled, took up home in the Blue Mountains. Mm -hmm. Thor and Oakenshield then left. Mm -hmm. That's when he came. Actually, he went west, met up with Bilbo. Then they went and retook Erebor. Mm -hmm. So, Thorin did used to rule the Blue Mountains. Okay. But he's um, not currently the king. That's obviously not currently the king. You right. don't know who's. You know, just yeah. you just had a regular success. You didn't get anything else. Yeah. So. Okay. So he's like, uh, I know that Thorin Oakenshield was once the king of the Blue Mountains, but that was long ago and he kind of like looks at Vidar and just kind of walks well walks on tell me something I don't know <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> you smell so, badly did you know water is wet <laughs> I go walking through the halls I have my Matic in my left hand raised up. Boy! I'm yelling out. Who's here? You gonna greet us? 
<laughs> but, so yeah, you, you go up the rest of the way of the path, and you like go up on this big bridge. You you cross the bridge, and as you start to yell and scream, you see this big bustle of dwarves at the entrance, like pretty near, like right inside the mouth of the cave, right? Like not the cave, but intricately carved hall. Um, and you you actually hear this like great horn sound, like just this big like war horn sounds like deep inside the mountain shit and then as you like kind of approach it seems like you can feel the bridge just vibrate uh, with the weight of all these heavy boots that seem to be beyond the march just gh, gh, gh. and um as you draw nearer and nearer you see like kind of inside are these crates and uh supplies all covered with canvas tarps and as you look at them, like they're obviously like foodstuffs and weapons, and there's a couple quartermasters that don't let don't don't notice you yet. They're like seem to be doing an inventory of all this stuff. And eventually, there is these guards that they wear this bright mail, and they're standing at the entrance, and they're like, "Hey, stop there! Who dares enter the halls of Thorin?" Well, it's me. Vidar, son of Godar. Son of who? Godar. God damn it. The Iron Heels. Godare? Who's Godare? Ah. Uh, who go dare? Who go dare? And one of the guards is like, Come here closer. Let me see your face. Let me see your beard. Uh, who are these tall, tall ones with you? Well, these are some men I brought with me. We are on a mission. I'm from the Iron Hills. Fornost has been taken. Sacked. Sacked by orcs. We mean to take it back. Hmm. He kind of... The guard kind of comes up to you guys. Kind of frowns, and he has this long beard. He stands about even height with Vidar, but quite a bit shorter than the rest of you. And he kind of gives you a glance. And so, Vidar, I want you to do... Either a courtesy or persuade at 12 since you're a dwarf. You ready to dolph? <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a long trip for nothing. Yeah. Uh, well. <laughs> I. I, I uh... <laughs> <laughs> but I'll hope that because it's a know. 12 right uh, wits I think yeah yeah you said 12 yep so that'll add 4 Whew. there you go okay so he's like alright tell me about your friends here well the mopey looking one, he's some kind of uh, royal blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's, uh, he, he's, he's kind of been showing us around with leading this group. The, uh, the tall, dirty one, he's the chief. Chief of uh, the, the South North men. Well, south to us, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> they, call themselves, they call themselves the North men. But they're south of us, and they really <laughs> like beavers. <laughs> <laughs> then oh, the other one there with the dark beard, I don't quite know a whole lot about him. He's a little bit on the quiet side, uh, which I, I, I prefer. Uh, he, that's kind of endearing to me, that he just stay quiet and stay right where he's at. And then, <laughs> then the one with the fiery hair, well, he can sing a tune, and he can tell a story uh, I, I rather like him uh, he's he's here to help as well and the guard says stories I like stories I know you do <laughs> <laughs> never been a store dwarf that doesn't like stories or a tune and we've got them in spades we need to get inside though we need to Rally the men to our cause, but it looks like it looks like you're all planning on a war. What's going on? 
planning on a war. He says, we're planning on a long journey to what? Erebor, the Lonely Mountain. Erebor? Are we headed back to Erebor? I don't know about you, but we are. And he says, Lord Bosco, Lord Bilfred, come here. We have some queer visitors. And then around the corner, you just see a bunch of dwarves kind of enter and they uh, start to start to like prepare their mail and stuff. And for, uh, you know, they, they, they kind of have armor that they're packing up and weapons and they're starting to work with the foodstuffs and two uh, very stout dwarves approach you and give you a uh, give you a weighing glance. The long beards and the broad beans. So Bosco and Bilfred come up to you guys and say, What do you do here, standing on our bridge, blocking our exits? Well, we was coming to ask for aid. And Bosco's like, aid for what? In taking a fortress back, taken by orcs. <laughs> Bilfred kind of looks at him. Get to the side. We need to exit these halls by midday. Well, you can exit the halls, but who do I need to speak to about getting aid? And uh, Bosco and Bilfred say, They stand before you. The lords of this place now, the long beards and the broad beans. Thorid's long, Thorid is long gone. Word is that he has passed from this Middle Earth. Wow. Rest him. I fought with Thorn. Fought in the Battle of Five Arm as I did. And Bosco says, then, then you will know why we need to return to our homeland. I now join us. Perhaps this man can tell us some stories on our trek, but we have many long months of the road ahead of us. Down the mountains, down the river Loon, and across the Great East Road, all the way to the Misty Mountains, across the off, across to Berkwood and finally up to the Lonely Mountain itself. If you should join us, I suppose you'd be welcome. But as far as throwing our lot in with some unknown war, well, you have to find someone else. Well, I don't need all the men. If you could spare a good amount of men. <laughs> We're headed that direction anyhow. It wouldn't take long. We could take back this fortress, kill them orcs. They just kind of snarl at you and start to head off. And so this is going to be another encounter. Your threshold is going to be three. And so you guys are need, going to need to persuade the long beards and the broad beans. Oh, shit. Um, so Vidar is already part of this. I'm getting in on it. Yeah, I think Thor will as well. Since I just made a very long fucking walk. So and I'm going to come. Roll. And I'm, oh, what do I need to roll? Uh, so for um, preliminaries. So pre preliminary, so... Uh, Let's, let's, if, if you want to be part of this, so everybody roll insight. Wow. Dom, hold nothing. Nothing, nothing. Oh, Aravul gets one extra. So you guys will need to introduce yourself to the to these dwarves and the discussion will happen 
Aravul during this entire encounter has one extra d6 so he can throw in. He can also donate to someone else, remember? Mm -hmm. um, your threshold is going to be three. So basically, you're going to need three successes before three failures, and then maybe, maybe you'll convince them. Uh, realize, realize that on the way to Erebor, like this is kind of on the way mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah. So it'd be too far out of the way. And that's that's what I just told them too. So yeah, yeah. Going that same way. Yeah. Well, like Giag go first or whatever, since he's the dwarf. Um, Vidar is going to attempt to. Uh, Vida is going to attempt to awe them <laughs> with awe <laughs> with the promises of riches. Uh oh, it's kind of not what awe is. Who's got money? Well, as I reveal <gasps> my treasure. Gonna go in the belt. Oh, oh, oh! All right, I'll allow that. And I'm hoping that treasure gives me some kind of bonus here. I said, "Whoa, well, there's treasure to be had if you haven't heard. And if you haven't heard, let me show you. I found this on my travels there, and there's plenty more. And I." flash the belt I gotta pull it off and I hold it up in my hand my other hand that's not holding my matic and I show them look gaze upon this it is of our people look at the runes don't you want to send men there to fight fight for our treasure fight to get rid of these orcs our mortal enemies all right I uh dropped the TN to 12 for that Nice. Oh. That actually counts as two. That's two successes. Wow. So Billford's like, I've never seen anything like this. Where did you find it? I found it near the place where we need to go, where those oaks were. Down looks to Bosco, just nudges him. I, I think, I think we need to go there. Bosco's like, I'm not quite convinced yet. I don't want to throw these dwarves' lives away in some bloody war that we aren't part of. Let's go to Erebor, live out our days in peace. Peace. Erebor asks. There's four and says, I never knew a dwarf to run from a fight. And Some fights are not ours to fight. This fight is the fight every free person of Middle-earth will need to fight, either now or later. When the fight comes to your doors, which it will, as it has mine, you will see. But let me tell you the story of bravery. The man, or I'm sorry. The dwarf Onar of the Iron Hills was my compatriot, and he fought bravely. But these spawn of the darkness that in that uh, that hold for us now, they were responsible for his death. These creatures of the night, goblins and spiders and trolls. Let me tell you of how he fought and died to save men that he called his brothers in the end. And he would go and recount the tale of fighting the spiders, leaving out anything to do with Arthur. Yeah, I was going to say, good thing he's not here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so yeah, I'm trying to use Inspire here. I'd I'd lower your your TN for that too because I forgot about Onar, and they would be persuaded by a, t a tale of a dwarf's valor, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I was. So hoping. twelve, a dwarf's valor and treasure. 
Hit him in their weak spots. Of course. Oh. <laughs> As anticipated. <laughs> That's why I love this system. It couldn't be any fucking thing else. You could have bet your fucking house on it after all that. And your eye awareness rises to 12. Yeah, boy. That's number seven tonight. <laughs> That's the first one I've rolled, too. I've rolled pretty well this session. And Except Bosco the says, Then, Aravul, you have made you, you have made my point for me. Dwarves die, and more dwarves will die if we continue on the, on the path you suggest. Nay, we will cross the mountains to the Lonely Mountain, and there we will live out our days in riches. The men of Vale, or men of Vale, Colorado, men of Dale, <laughs> men of Dale, <laughs> men of Vale. <laughs> With the men of Dale and trade with them and both of our peoples will become prosperous. I do not think we will deviate from the road. I do not wish more of my brothers slain. Uh, at the mention of the men of Dale, Thorold would pipe up and uh, would uh, would say that he, uh, he uh, fought in the Battle of Five Armies as well alongside uh, Bard and um, he remembers um, how uh, Thorin and his uh, his compatriots uh, rode out and fought against uh, the orcs, and how they ended up fighting Azog and uh, ending up losing his life. But how much uh, bravery they had, and how much it inspired him to watch uh, Thorin as the king of the mountain. Is that a persuade? Yeah. That's a pretty good tale too. Actually, you have a tie. I'll give you a twelve. Oof. Hey! It's a great really? success, too. <laughs> it's a great success as well. Even though you just beat it. He says, And so a man of Dale has come into our halls? One no less that have fought with King Thorin. May he rest in peace. And do you think this is a worthy cause? Is he asking me? Yes. Okay. Uh, Thor would uh, nod, and he uh, he would say, uh, "Whether or not it's a worldly, a worldly, uh, a worthy cause is is beyond the point that this matter. Uh, for if you wait now, you'll only have to fight them by yourselves, or it just it wouldn't make sense to 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 not help, as it would only make the matters worse for everyone else later on." Bosco, long beard, kind of strokes his red beard and looks to his left where Brilfred stands and Bilfred Broadbeam kind of puts his hand to his temple and scratches his head and says, The leaders of our families have gathered here. Allow us a short council and we shall return to you with an answer. So they retire. They retire for a few minutes, and it's like five minutes, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you hear, like, from around the corner, like all these dwarves just shouting, like, "Hell yeah!" You know, type of, type of stuff. Show us the belt. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see it. <laughs> And so Bosco returns and says, Well, we're leaving anyway. The mines have grown dim, my friends. Indeed, there's still iron to be found here. But there's iron to be found in many hills and hollows. Nay, the riches of Arid Luin are exhausted, and the number of my kin here have dwindled. Erber, the Lonely Mountain, is our home, and it is there we belong. But alas, a home is no good if it is overrun by shadow, and the enemy prevails. You will have our axes in this battle. 
We look only for a leader to lead us to victory. They look at Iravul. Mm, he says, I am Iravul, the Prince of Cardalon. I shall lead you as best I may, and we together will destroy these orc that are infesting Fornost and drive them into the sea if we must. Vader lets a uh, huzzah. Arbol says, Together the free peoples of Middle-earth will come together again and drive back the shadows. Beat our elbows, Carl. Why? What I tell you? Aye, lad. It be true. It seems this is good times indeed. I told you, my kin would help. I guess we should march with them. Aye, let us be the first to the ranks. Master Longbeard, Master Broadbeam, tell us what we can do to help. It says, fight by our side. He says, dwarves are a stout folk, but we set our mind to something. We can move mountains, as you have seen. And as the scene ends, there's legion upon legions of dwarves exiting Air Luin, marching over this granite bridge. On we go! Long beards, broad beams, dwarves of Air Luin, to war! Carol immediately bust out with his pig born. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's it. <laughs> nice. That was a good one. I world's about to break. Tar 